Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray for the direction of this great nation. We also want to pray for our local community and region. We want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe uh, you have a special unspoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. God, we pray specifically for the direction of this nation. We pray for the influence of the word of God, the spirit of God, and the people of God that can have on the direction of this nation and the leadership of this nation. We also pray for our local region and community and pray and trust that you'll continue to open up doors of utterance. We pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church members in particular. and pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your divine favor. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for a hedge of protection to be supplied for each and every one of them. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. I want to direct your attention to a very important passage of scripture found here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. And we want to begin in verse number 17. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse number 17. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not. That you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you. Divisions among you, and I partly believe it, for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. I'm going to read verse 19 again, and that's really what we're going to talk about. For there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. And I want to talk to us for a few moments on this very, very critically important subject. There must be heresies among you. There must be heresies among you. You know, we hear that word heresy and heresies and anybody that is involved with truth and has an understanding for truth and a love for truth at some point is going to come in contact with the word heresy because the word heresy is has a deep history uh, in Christendom and in the history of the church over the last 2,000 years. What does the word heresies mean? It literally means an opinion uh, that is rooted in a personal choice, um, a preference to believe something most notably a personal uh, opinion, a personal position uh, of looking at something either in scripture or the procedure of the church or how this church is doing something or why this church is doing something and to formulate uh, an opinion, a personal opinion about that. It also means sect. When you look at the word sect, S-E-C-T, which means a group um, it is also used uh, as this word heresy. So it first means uh, a choice or an opinion. And then secondly, it means a sect, which when you have a sect, you are having a group, um, a following, um, maybe just a couple people that uh, in, a, in a congregation that believe something. It is never used favorably. Somebody that has um, a personal opinion that is in contradiction or opposition 
to the teaching of a pastor or the position uh, of a particular apostolic church. It is never used in a good way. And then, of course, later on in the pastoral epistle, it talks about a heretic. Well, a heretic is somebody that holds to a heresy. And in that particular usage in the pastoral epistles, it's talking about after the first or second admonition, reject. A person that you cannot bring back to um, apostolic footing, whether it's maybe it's biblical or maybe it's just procedural. For example, um, somebody that says, you know, that's that's just not how the pastor um, is is teaching or the pastor wants something to be done in this particular church. Well, to hold to your own personal view and then broadcast that can be something that is what we're referring to here in 1 Corinthians 11 could develop a wedge between not just an individual, uh, but if it's broadcast and cultivated um, in darkness or to the side, or you get on the telephone or you begin to text or you email a few people, if that's an opposition to what the pastor is upholding, um, whether it's from the Bible or it's for just how a church procedurally is running, it's not a good thing. It's never held in a good thing. It is not wrong to disagree with leadership, okay? Now, before we address that, I wanna say this. Notice with me in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 that this is on the heels of talking about the very important apostolic teaching where it's talking about hair, of course, uncut long hair on a woman and short hair on a man. And there are spiritual principles, supernatural principles that are attached to hair length. And that is what he is talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, at least at the outset. But notice with me, there's almost like a segue that brings him in to talk about heresies and when he's talking about this, look at verse number 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a shame unto him. Now that is not a, a specific cultural teaching in a specific city, whether it's Corinth or Ephesus or any number of cities in Asia Minor or in uh, in the old world. But he continues, but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her for her hair is given her for a covenant. Of course, God gave a woman long hair to be a veil. It is a veil. But if any man seem to be contentious, that word contentious means argumentative or just, just to hold to your own opinion about something to where it creates an agitation. But this word contentious is not good. If any man seem to be contentious, listen to this, okay? We have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now what that is saying is, is all the apostolic churches believe this message. This is a practice that is built on a revelation that is to be practiced and upheld in all apostolic churches, period. No argument. However, you and I both know that even in our culture today, with this type of solidly apostolic teaching, that there are people that think that this is nonsensical. Either they try to put it into a historic frame by removing it from the relevance of being in the 21st century, or they just dismiss it on intellectual, intellectual merits, understanding that this was okay for them then, but this is the 21st century and somehow the church has been through so many different revisions through the Reformation and the non-denominational movement, and we just don't practice that today. It's not a big deal to God. If you understand the first 11 verses of this, it is an incredible 
deal. It reveals submission. It has angelic ramifications. It is definitely a supernatural revelation to understand the purpose of your hair. But here the Apostle Paul is saying, if any man seem to be argumentative, if anybody has uh, is contentious about this, it's maybe has their own personal view about this to where it's going to become a problem, let them know that this is the way it's done in all apostolic churches, period. So with that as an understanding, he now moves into our text. And he says this, he says, now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you. Now these divisions are the sum total of what we would call heresies. They become a personal opinion, a personal thought, a personal perspective on something, that in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with that. If the pastor gets up and says, as a congregation, I feel like it would be best if we did this. And somebody says, well, I don't believe that. I don't see that. I don't feel like that's right. I don't, for this reason or that reason, really when you, when it comes together, it's their, their opinion against the pastor's opinion. It's okay to hold to that opinion. But to voice that opinion, and that is where the problem is, to vocalize that to one other person, because see, that could form your personal opinion could now become where you're developing a wedge, developing a wedge, and that's where it becomes dangerous. To hold your own opinion about something, but you, you yield because you're submitted. You have to be obey them that have the rule over you, but but you're doing it now, and it truly is an act of submission because you're you understand your own opinion, but you're doing this because this is what the pastor says. That is submission to authority. It's not necessarily when you're in agreement. It may be its highest and most pronounced demonstration is when you hold your opinion and it differs for the opinion of the pastor. But when it's the word of God and it's clear biblical principle, there should be no other opinions, no other opinions because this is the word of God. And so the apostle continues, he says, there are divisions among you at the church of Corinth. And I understand this. For there must also be heresies among you. There has to be people that are exercising their own personal perspectives of choices and those of leadership or those of doctrine or those that have a spiritual revelation or those that are coming from spiritual authority. Why? Why does there have to be heresies? Once again, it's okay to have a personal opinion and just say, well, maybe I need to talk to the pastor about this. Maybe he can help me on this. But I've noticed that people that continue to maintain personal a personal opinion, if it's not dealt with and nailed down by a greater spiritual uh, principle, they will it will become a breeding ground for other opinions. And people that continue to foment from time to time, either people that are just think themselves to be super spiritual or people that not yet have learned the blessedness of spiritual authority and submission or people that just are operating by some deal that has not been dealt with by the Holy Ghost and they just, they're just immature, they're spiritually immature. But these left to themselves, if they're shared with others, that's where the problem is. It's fine to hold to hold yourself to something if you really feel it's something different, but to share that with others, that's where the problem is. But the apostle is saying there must be heresies. Why does there have to be where people cannot keep their, their individual opinions in check and it's a personal perspective or a personal choice to do so? Why does there have to be heresies? It's very simple, and he makes this very clear to us. Listen to the is carefully. Verse number 19, for there must also be heresies among you that they which are approved 
may be manifest among you. There has to be, there has to be spiritual immaturity or people that are not being submitted or people that don't have proper spiritual decorum and voice their spiritual opinion to others so that they that are strong and rooted and mature may be made manifest. In fact, if I understand this correctly, this is the one thing that reveals who really is spiritually loyal, who really is spiritually mature, who really is spiritually rooted and grounded, who really is spiritually anchored. You can tap any, any one of these older saints that have been around for years and years and weathered many spiritual storms and seen many things and tap them on the shoulder. And they would be the first one to straighten somebody out that has one of these little spiritual, uh, like pastor, I just feel like God has showed me something and, and the pastor's not doing it right or the pastor's not teaching right or this is gonna happen to the church. God never reveals to the pew what he is going to do. That would violate what the Spirit of God did or Jesus Christ did on the island of Patmos where he gave it to the Apostle John and it was given to the angels of the church, which is spiritual leadership or the pastor. It's never been that way. It's never been God's methodology to reveal something to the pew about what is going to happen to the church or happen to somebody and God not reveal it to spiritual authority and headship that was God called and God sent. This creates a lot of problems and has through the years where people get super spiritual and just are not able to rein themselves in. Either they're not balancing it out or bouncing it off other people. They go to certain people that are spiritually not mature yet or spiritually weak because these are the things that are revealed when people hold to a personal private opinion. The Bible said, there must be heresies among you that they that are approved. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be approved. I want to be right with God. I want to be where I'm supposed to be. And oftentimes, people that hold to these kind of spiritual opinions, there's something in their past, there's something wanting in their personal development, their spirit, um, where they are trying to overcome some deeper thing in their life. It really doesn't have anything to do with the spirit. It has everything to do with these people wanting to be somebody to be perceived as being super spiritual. Those are just my experiences. And if they don't rein it in and understand that they're the ones with the issue, if it just, wherever they go and whatever happens, it will continue to play out until they either deal with it or they are gone. They're out of the church. I have seen people used in this fashion through the years that ultimately got cycled out of the church of the living God. And today, um, I just saw somebody like this recently that's not even, they painted their hair orange, they cut it off. They're not even in the church. Very sad deal. But these kind of things happen. And here the apostle is saying, there must be heresies. There must be people that have their own personal view and their own personal opinion that are now going around in the background and going around in the shadows that are voicing things. They have, this has to be. And it's God's way of approving people that truly are mature, people that truly are rooted and grounded, and people that truly are spiritually loyal. It has to be that way. Anyway, just wanted to talk to you from God's word here today. Trust this has been a blessing to you, and we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.